Welding module is an advanced tool available on Duramin 40, Duramin 100 and Duramin 650. It allows to perform hardness testing measurements of welded samples in a simple, accurate and repeatable way. During this video we will learn how to use it step by step. Before we start we make sure that the welded sample, in this case a butt weld joint, is correctly polished and etched in order to clearly identify base material, heat affected zone and weld. We first create a new job by clicking on the plus button. We give it a name and select an objective. All these fields can be edited at any time by clicking on the E button. Then we choose a testing method and a load. In this case, Vickers 10 kg force. In order to clearly see the fusion line and the heat affected zone, it is helpful to use the smallest magnification lens available in the turret, in this case 2.5 times. Next, we adjust the focus. Then we press on the In Focus Blinking button. Now we can look at the full sample by using the overview camera. This will help to quickly position the indentation pattern on the surface of the sample. We go to Test Pattern and select Welding Module. We can see that the indentation pattern is divided into zones. The indents belonging to M1 and M2 will be positioned in the left and right base materials. The indents in HAS1 and HAS2 will go into the left and right heat affected zones and the indents in the group WELD will be positioned in the WELD zone. The first step is to drag these three red dashed segments on the edge of the sample. The first line goes on the edge of the left base material and heat affected zone. The second one goes on top of the welded area and the third one goes on the right side of the sample. By clicking on the magnifying lens icon, we will have a full view of the pattern. In the offset section, we can choose the distance of the indents from the edge, in this case 2 mm. If we want the indent pattern to flip and be above the dashed line, we can check the mirror box. This is useful when we're testing the lower side of the sample. By clicking on points, we access the pattern control board where we can modify many parameters in each group independently. We can choose the number of indents in each group, the distance between indents, and the distance between zones. We can choose to test only the left or the right side of the pattern, only the weld, or the full pattern. Now we drag the HAS1 and HAS2 groups of indents inside the two heat affected zones. If we zoom in by holding down CTRL and SHIFT and left click, we can see this little red T. This line has to be aligned with the fusion line. The distance between the fusion line and the first indent of the group can be changed from offset to fusion line. We can now align the pattern more accurately by using the objective camera. Let's remember to click on save before we switch camera. First, we want to adjust the position of the red dashed lines. By double clicking on any point of the pattern, the automatic stage will be centered under the camera, making this operation extremely quick and simple. Now we can align the red T with the fusion line with more precision. We do this by double clicking it and making sure it's positioned right on the fusion line that goes here. We do this in both the right and the left side. We also have the possibility of adding two extra points next to the fusion line by going to test pattern, points and checking the box plus two. Here we can reposition the points so they have the same distance to the fusion line. There is one last thing we want to do before starting the test. 
we should check that the lens selected for indent measurement, in this case 10 times, is perfectly in focus. And that the option indent and measure is enabled. This will speed up the testing process. We are now ready and we click on start. Once the test is done, a result chart will be available in the lower side of the screen. We can see that each zone is represented by a different color. Base materials in green, has in yellow, and wilt in red. This makes it easier to interpret the results. To take a closer look at the results, go to the upper left corner and click on Results. We can create a report by clicking on Report and Print. By doing this we will not actually send the report to a printer, but only generate a report with results from the test. Comments can also be added right away. Click on Export and choose either PDF or Excel and click OK. If we want to archive the results inside the software, we click on Archive, give it a name and click OK. We can also save the project with all the parameters, including lens selection, indent pattern and load, by clicking on Program, Save. By doing this, we will be able to redo this test without having to set it up from scratch. And we're done!